Alright, so I wanted to kind of just show you guys how I use Fibonacci retracements in a couple ways uh, as a predictive price as both a support and resistance. Um, and then maybe later on in the video I can kind of show you how I pair it with volume profile. So here we have a 20 year chart of General Electric. The reason I'm using General Electric is because it's one of the few stocks that I watch that's still semi mid range and not breaking out to all time highs. So for a Fibonacci retracement, we apply it over a certain period of time. In this instance, we're applying it from the all-time high, or the 20-year high, at 60 half, down into the 20-year low at 573. The retracement levels don't matter until the complete range is set. Therefore, any lines before the low is set here at 573 should be non-existent. Thinkorswim just really likes to show you everything. So, from the range that's set from 60 half to 573, we can see that price bounces off the 573. It moves up here into the 23.6, one of the FIB levels. It's not one of the strongest FIB levels. Typically, in levels of resistance and support, you look at the 61.8. It's called the Golden Fibonacci, and that's the strongest. The 50, and then the 38.2. These three are the keys. The 76.4 and the 23.6. They do act as support and resistance, usually on the first or second test, but typically you see a breakthrough after that. So we do see a move up in GE up here into the 23.6 at 18.65. Price tests it, it breaks the next month, and then it fails the month after. So where does price fail to, and why does it stop here at the low of 13.75? Well, we could apply another Fibonacci from the low into that high test, and let's go ahead and change it blue so we can see. And you can see that once price made it to this point, and we've redrawn, we've drawn the secondary Fibonacci, price came back down to the 38.2 of that shorter term level and held price and tested for five months in a row here and continued to hold price. Then price bounces up off of that shorter term 38.2 and makes a new high. Once it makes this new high, this level is no longer valid. So we can go ahead and we can move this level up one more time. Once again, once price pulls back off of there, it comes down and it tests that 38.2, one, two, three, four months in a row. And again, now that level is 15.57 and we see price come up. It breaks up and through that 23.6, that first set we've made. And this time we see it start to base that price for another five months here. Now, once this price moves up, Again, through the zero, we can remove it. Typically what I like to do is I just take the zero line off, then I let the stock move um, tit for tat, and once a new high is established, I just right click and activate, and I can move it with its own new high. So we see once price breaks up over this 23.6 at 1885, it continues its journey up and through and once again it comes into this 38.2 of the second or of the primary fib that we drew on the all-time high scale it tests up it tries to hold and then it creates a failure and continues to fail against each price point so we can come up and we can go ahead and draw it here so now we have let me just show the zero so now we have the secondary fib from that low all the way up here into this high that it was set when it tested this primary 38.2, which we've referenced as a significant level. And we see the price stagnate here below level, below this level. But it still manages to hold above the 23.6 of that secondary. And even on the lowest test, it comes down into that secondary 38.2 at 19.55, and it holds, as well as holds above that primary 23.6 down here at 18.65, that we tested multiple times. Once price comes up and back through that zero line again, again, we can rotate this. So now, if we come into current, we see that price has tested up into GE's 50% of that full range from 60 and a half to 573. And we've moved our secondary up from this all time low up here into that 33 level where we hit the high on July 2016. Price has since stagnated between the 50 and the 38 two primaries here at 2366 to this 33 range. 
and then we see this back and forth movement. So now what we do to play this is one of two ways. You can play the bounce off the 2366 area, this primary 38-2, for a move up and to test back into that 33. Or you can wait for that 33 to break and get that move up to test that 39 area. Uh, I'm assuming that this spike on GE is real uh, low, and so we could also draw another retracement level on a shorter term basis in this ma manner. And we'll go ahead and make it yellow. And then this gives you shorter term price targets to be on the watch for. If we want to, we can come down into, let's just do a three year. And we can see how these price points have played out. So once range is established, price breaks lower below the 23.6, it tries to hold multiple times, it finally fails, we get a topping tail, we get another rejection candle here on the weekly, and price breaks down into that third term, 38.2, that shortest term here at 27.79. Price fails through, continues to fail, and now we're starting to try to get a confirmation up and above that 38.2. So we do see that there are a lot of confluence of points here between all three terms on the fibs that we drew the from 2619 to 2665 so if this were me trading i would be watching for this area to hold even though we have had a recovery over the shortest term 382 the longer term the fibonacci level the more bearing and stance it has on the stock uh, if we want to, we can go ahead and look at another stock. Um, let's go ahead and let's look at uh, let's look at Walmart for example. I've already got everything drawn on Walmart, so let me clear it off for you real quick. And here we see Walmart. Uh, we could draw a retracement such as this. For the first one, you can see the action that it's taken. Instead of GE, where it was a high to a low, we've drawn this Fibonacci from the low into the high. Uh, the retracement levels drawn should always dictate the direction of price for what you're trying to draw. So once we establish the range at the all-time high at 90.97, we see price falls off drastically. One, two, three, four. Let's just put it into a 10 year so we can see that just a little bit clearer. And we can see once price falls back through the 23.6, it rejects on multiple month time frames. And eventually it finds a full rejection all the way down into the 38.2 at $62. Price bounces off the 38.2. It runs into a shorter term from that all-time high that we drew down here into what we're calling that temporary low we can see once price does bounce off the 38.2 it bounces and tests almost exactly into that shorter term 23.6 and we see it fail back through again once it fails again we can activate it and we can move it lower and now we have our new second set of Fibonacci levels so price comes down and it tests here into the 56.3 area where there was previous consolidation. And then it bounces up through that 38.2. It takes back that price. And then it comes back on a monthly. It tests price once more at 62. And then it keep, continues its bounce. It runs into the 38.2 of the secondary here at 69.6. It fails. It once again comes back and it tests the primary 38.2 down here at 62. And then it comes up through that secondary 38.2 at 69.6 and tests the primary 23.6 and the secondary 50 here from 73 to 73.81. You can once again on the monthly see topping tails. We have a spinning top and then we have a uh, another bearish candle here. It's not quite a not quite a falling hammer, but. Uh, you can see this resistance of price here on a, a two-month time frame. Price comes back below it. It tries to hold that uh, secondary 38.2, one, two candles. It fails through once more, and then back up. The play to be made here, when we see this rejection in this range, the 
than the 50 is to wait for this to break and then you play the confirmation higher. So we see that move here. We can go into a shorter term time frame. We see the multiple failed attempts here and here. And then we get this candle, which is the playable candle up and through the resistance. And then price migrates up and into that secondary 61.8 at 77.82. What does price do once it gets to the secondary 61.8? We can see a nice bullish breakthrough of price. And then if we want to come into a smaller term time frame, we can see a back test of price at 77.82, that's secondary 61.8. It confirms the hold and then it advances up into the 80.47 area. If we want, we can go ahead and put some room above it. And then if we want again on a shorter term time frame, we can go ahead and we can draw a Fibonacci retracement let's color it yellow and you can see that once price made this bounce it was then rejected at one of the golden retracements the 161.8 up here at 80.46 almost to the penny price runs into the shorter term 161.8 and then fails so in a shorter term stance once it touches that 161.8 at 80.46 that is the one move that we're looking for that's probably where you sell part of a position, or at least I would. And then you get this move lower. Walmart, in this sense, is still bullish as it's holding above the secondary 61.8 here that we saw down here at the 77.82 range. So this is where we would look for another bounce in the, in the stock. Uh, and then, as well, we could go ahead, since this is no longer the all-time high, we can, or not all time high, but this is no longer the 100 as it's been broken through. So we can remove that. And what I like to do is I like to keep track of those levels. And so I've taken the 100 off to show that it's not a resistance point, but that 161.8 still exists up there at 4086. Now, as a shorter term, even shortest term, we could go ahead and we can draw a retracement level from this bounce low up into this high. And let's go ahead. I don't like to play the shortest term levels. Once the smaller my time frame, the less levels I put on. Just to keep the chart a little less cluttered. So let's go into the six month. And now we can see that from that low that we set on the bounce at the secondary 61.8 up into that high at 40, 80, 47 that we set a couple days ago, price moves off of that level and comes down to test this consolidation range above the 61.8, which is bullish, and then on the shortest term that we have drawn, it then also closes price above that shortest term, 61.8, at 78.82. So in this stance, there is nothing bearish about the Walmart, uh, about Walmart at this point. Uh, to see more bearish activity, if we want to play this down to a short side, which I wouldn't suggest, just given the action, you would look for a break underneath the secondary 61.8 at 77.82. To play it short uh, just generally because this consolidation level that has been put in is a volume and it's supportive and it's above a supportive Fibonacci level and then on the shortest term it's also above the supportive Fibonacci 618 here on this time frame as well now I use my Fibonacci levels and I pair them with a volume profile what the volume profile shows is volume by price. So as price stagnates, as this consolidation does, it builds out the amount of volume that's traded at that particular point. So what this shows us on the shorter term time frame is that consolidation and that range that is going to be supportive of price. Why is it supportive? Well, if somebody bought at this level, the 77, 79 level, then all of this has also been bought above that price level. All of these people, once price drops into them, are going to be trying to average down their positions by pennies or so. And so long as it stays in this general range, everybody that bought above that price is correct. Now, if price moves below that secondary 61.8 here at 77.82, you can see a, what I consider a null. That's a lack of volume at a price. And we can see that represented on the chart 
by this one candle that pushes price through the 60 or up to the 618 and then the second candle that holds it so if we see a move below the 618 the volume profile is giving us a good reason to be able to allow a shorter term move to the downside so above the 618 of the secondary bullish below bearish and that's also supported by that volume profile now we're not looking for too much of a move if it moves lower what you see here is about the same amount of volume in this given range from 75 all the way up into the 76 area so this volume would be supportive if it does come down we also note that the one how we use the 161.8 to move up to give a target price up here into the 8047 we now also have a 161.8 down here lower at 7613 so if price were to move down you can see that 7613 is right into volume and right into consolidation so that would be the first downside target if price were to break down and below that secondary 61.8 at 77.82 this works for every chart in all time frames or at least it does for me um, and so that's kind of why I'm making this video for you guys uh, I know a lot of us trade the NVDA uh, so I just kind of want to do it real quick I'll show you if we place a golden Fibonacci on this high down into the low and let's just go ahead and we'll remove all the shorter term levels but I do want to show you how price acts so we can see that this is the only line drawn and we'll take it let's just do it into a two-year daily so how does price react when it gets into targets so the 100 is drawn we see that price then gaps up and over the 100 and then continues its way all the way up into the 161.8 where price does base it tests back test this price multiple times and it finds one failure price is regained and then we see price continue to advance once price advances up and over we get the gap higher and then up into the 261.8 of that range we drew previously we can see multiple rejections at this price and then finally a break up and through and price continues to carry from 94 half all the way up into 120. we have consolidating action and then a back test of that 261.8 test one two three times of support we get a move higher the gap up and now we're at the next golden retracement of 423.6 where once again we see the rejection of price um, roughly 20 cents off of the golden level if you want we can do this in any time frame and witness how it works as well we have the our range drawn Oops. We have our range drawn. If I could snap to the right candle. So we set our range here from 127 down here into the 9517 of the pullback. If you want, we can even see how price acts in between it. We can see once range is set, price comes up to test the 618 and fails, test the 161.8 and fails. And then back down uh, now this gap obviously uh, gaps are non you can't predict a gap um, you can only kind of position yourself for how you uh, expect the stock to move but we see once price does break up and over the shorter term 100 it tests up into the 161.8 it fails it tests it again it fails and then it's confirmed by four candles of support on the daily chart and then it makes its push up and into that primary f uh, golden retracement level up here at 149.44 so uh, this is kind of how I use retracement levels I've kind of showed you how I use golden retracement levels as well as how I use just uh, intraday retracement levels as well uh, if you do have any questions feel free to reach out to me uh, I'll try to make a couple more explanatory videos but we're pushing 20 minutes on this one so um, like I said, um, it's certainly something you can learn. It's something you teach yourself over time. Uh, but from what I've found, uh, my favorite pairing, obviously, is 
Fibonacci levels, and the volume profile.